Hey guys, Dean Chase here with another geometry lesson for you. Hope you're all doing awesome. Let's go ahead and start with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for staying with us, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. I pray you'll bless my students, help them continue to learn and gain understanding. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So today we're going to be learning how to perform congruence transformations. Lesson 4.8, page 272. Let's go ahead and get started. A transformation is an operation that moves or changes a geometric figure in some way to produce a new figure. The new figure is called an image. A transformation can be shown using arrows. So here you go, you have the original figure triangle ABC transforms into triangle PQR, the image. Okay, the order of the vertices in a transformation statement tells you that P is the image of A, Q is the image of B, and R is the image of C. There are three main types of transformations. A translation moves every point of the figure the same distance in the same direction. A reflection uses a line of reflection to create a mirrored image of the original figure. And a rotation turns a figure about a fixed point called the center of rotation. So let's go ahead and keep going. Example one, they want us to name the type of transformation demonstrated in each picture. So if we look at A, A is simply sliding from here to here. It doesn't change its orientation or anything, it just slides. So that would be a transition in a straight path. Okay, if we look at B, you could tell number one, the dead giveaway is there's a center of rotation, but also Okay, I said the word rotation. So it's rotating about a point because this just goes right there. Kind of like a plane dive bombing out of the sky or something. So that would be a rotation about a point. Lastly, C, you can tell there's a line here and it is not the exact same. This point here is the same distance from this line, but flipped over it, okay? Just like this is the same distance from this line and this is the same distance from the line, not the same distance from each other all around. So this is called a reflection in a vertical line because the line is vertical, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. Not that hard of an example. Let's go ahead and keep going along. Translation. In a coordinate plane, a translation moves an object a given distance right or left, or up or down. You can use coordinate notation to describe a translation. So coordinate notation for a translation, you need to write this down. You can describe a translation by the notation, the original image, I mean the original XY translates into the new image X plus a number and Y plus a number, which shows that each point XY of the blue figure is translated horizontally A and vertically B units. Okay. So if you're going horizontally right, it's going to be addition. If you're going horizontally left, it's going to be subtraction. Same here. If you're going vertical up, it's going to be addition. Vertical down will be subtraction. Okay? Remember that. So figure W, X, Y, Z has vertices W, negative 1, 2, X, 2, 3, Y, 5, 0, and Z, 1, negative 1. Sketch W, X, Y, Z and its image after the translation um, x minus one, y plus three. So let's go ahead and sketch our original figure. W is negative one, two, negative one up two right here. Okay, um, x is two, three right here. Y is, that's x y is five zero right here and z is one negative one right here okay so our red is our original figure um and now they want to sketch w x y z oh they want to sketch it w x y z and its image after the translation so they want to sketch its new image after this translation so 
what we do is we just do our x value minus 1 and our um, y value plus 3. So negative 1 minus 1 will give us negative 2. Here, I'll go ahead and write these points down. We have negative 2, comma, um, and then 2 plus 3 will be 5. So one of our new points is 2, um, 5. So right, I'm going to do this actually in blue. Um, then our x value, so that was w, let's do w sub 2. x sub 2 would be... 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1, comma, 3 plus 3 will be 6. So 1, 6, right here. And then 5 minus 1 would be 4, so our y sub 1 would be 4, comma, 0 plus 3 will be 3. Oh, sub 2, sorry. Not sub one. Um, that's gonna be four three. Right here. Looks like they're gonna cross each other a little bit. And z is gonna be z sub two will be one minus one is zero, comma, negative one plus three would be two. Zero two. Right about here. And when we connect these dots, it should look just like our other image which it does, so that's good. Um, that's all you have to do, That that's not a hard problem. Just remember how to do the notation and what you do from that. So, let's go ahead and keep going. A reflection, in this lesson, when a reflection is shown in a coordinate plane, the line of reflection is always the x-axis or the y-axis, that makes it a lot easier for us. So, if you reflect across the x-axis, you just multiply the y coordinate by negative one. If you reflection in the y axis, you multiply the x coordinate by negative one. Um, multiplying by negative one is just simply saying you take the opposite of whatever the um, y value is here or whatever the x value is here. So in this example, all we have to do is take the opposite given. So we're reflecting across the y axis, that's what it says, you are to draw. You are drawing a pattern for a cross stitch design. Use a reflection in the y axis to draw the other half of the pattern. So we're going to take the points. Like here's a point, and we're going to take the opposite x value it has. So right here, its x value is zero. So the opposite is zero. This is kind of a confusing one to start with, but the opposite of zero is still zero. So we're going to put a point right there. Okay. So let's go to a different point right here. Um, its x value is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. So that's going to be right here, just straight across, positive 1. Because the y value stays the same. Okay? So let's go ahead and put our positive 1 right here. Um, once again, this point right here is going to stay there because 0, 0. Same with this point. Let's go ahead and do all our zeros and this point. Okay? Um, right here, our x value is negative 2, so our new x value would be positive 2, just the opposite, okay? Um, then right here, our x value is negative 3, so we're going to go over to positive 3 right here. Um, and then lastly, oh, two more, I guess. This one is negative 1, so we go straight over to positive 1. And same thing here, negative one to positive one. And then we just need to copy our design down to look just like our other half. Um, there you go. Not too bad. Um, probably flew through that a little too fast. I'm sorry if I did, just watch it again. Um, let's keep going. So, um, here we have Rotation. In this lesson, if a rotation is shown in a coordinate plane, the center of rotation is the origin. That's handy. Um, sorry, this cut off a little bit. The direction of rotation can either be clockwise or counterclockwise. The angle of rotation is formed by rays drawn from the center of rotation through corresponding points on the original figure and its image. Notice that the rotation preserves 
the distance from the center of rotation. So segments drawn from the center of rotation to the corresponding point on the figures are congruent. Okay. So they want us to graph P, Q, and R, S, and to tell whether R, S is a rotation of P, Q about the origin. If so, give the angle and direction of the rotation. So P, Q, let's do that in red. P is 2, 6. Um, Q is 5, 1. Okay. Then R is 6, negative 1. We'll do it in purple. 6, negative 1. And 1, 2. 1, 2, sorry. I think I just, 1, negative 2. I think I just fell asleep there. Um, man, am I that boring? <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> okay, so, as you can tell, um, if we were to draw a line from the second points, like here and here, these were both the second points, um, those are not the same distance from the origin. So you automatically know this is not a rotation. There's no way to spin those two lines around this point and have them land on top of each other. So that is not um, a ro rotation. So let's go ahead and give it another try. They want us to graph P, Q, and R, S again. So P is four, two, I'll do it in red again, right here, and Q is three, three. Right there, nice little short line. And R is negative two, four. Um, and then S is negative three, three. Um, right here. So let's go from our second point again to the origin. Um, and then let's go from our second one, the first one, three, three, right here. And if we were to use the distance formula, we could actually find out that those lines are the same length. But just looking at this, you could tell that this could rotate to here or, or back. Oh, sorry, you know what? I drew this line wrong. <laughs> that looks better. Um, you could rotate this to here. Like if you start here and just kept it tight on a line, it would end up right on, perfectly on top of the other one. So here we have a rotation. And, so I'll write that down, we have a rotation. Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. And it's going from red to purple, which is counterclockwise. Um, and it rotates, if you look here, if you were to find the slopes of these two lines, you would find out that they are 90 degrees. So it rotates counterclockwise 90 degrees. Um, Otherwise, you'd have to use a protractor, but since they're 90 degrees, you could use a slope. And if they're opposite reciprocals, they are perpendicular, meaning they're um, 90 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and keep going. Example five, the vertices of D, E, F, R, D is negative one, three, E is four, two, and F is one, negative two. The rule X, Y transforms X minus two and y plus four was used to translate DEF to triangle XYZ. Show that DEF and XYZ are congruent to verify that the translation is a congruence transformation. So the first thing we then need to do is we need to find our new points. So our new points are then be found using X minus two and Y plus four. So negative one minus two is gonna give us negative three. So, um, Sorry, our x is going to be negative 3, comma, and then our y is plus 4. So we have 3 plus 4 will give us 7. That's our x value. Um, our y value is going to be based off of e. So it's going to be 4 minus 2, which is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then lastly, our f value is going to be... 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 2 plus 4 is going to be 2. Okay, Those are our new values. Okay, So to prove that these two figures are going to be congruent, one way we can do it that we all know is we can use the distance formula, which I put up at the top of the screen. Um, 
we can use that distance formula and plug in like our DE points, our EF points, and our FD points. And then we'd have to plug in HY and see if it's the same as DE, XY, sorry. And we'd have to plug in YF to see if it's the same as EF. Oh, sorry, that's Y, YZ. That should be a Z, not an F. Um, and then uh, lastly, we'd plug in our XY, I mean our XZ to see if it's the same as DF, okay? Um, that's a lot of work. That's the way you're gonna have to do it, but I'm gonna save us time in our lesson so you can go ahead and get started on your homework. And I'm gonna tell you that DE and XY were both square root 26, okay? Um, DF and XZ were both square root 29, and EF and YZ were both five, okay? Now, if you know that you have three sets of congruent sides, you know that you could use the SSS congruence postulate to state that triangle DEF is congruent to XYZ. And like I said again, that was by the SSS congruence postulate. That's a whole lesson, guys. Um, probably a little longer than we were hoping, but still really important. So go ahead, keep following along, keep learning, keep being awesome. Like and subscribe, please. Comment whatever you want. Um, and I guess I'll see ya! Bye.